Hi, this is Carol Stiles uh, from the Bosch Kitchen Center at HealthyKitchens.com. Today we're going to show you how we make pasta using our Bosch Kitchen Center. To start with, we're using milled semolina flour, which is made from durum wheat. Uh, we put it through on the finer texture on our mill because if we're doing some of the finer pastas, like angel hair pasta, it will require uh, to go through smaller holes. So this is three cups of flour approximately. And into that we're going to use um, about oh, three eggs here. Now the more eggs you add to your pasta, the richer the pasta becomes. And then you can add a uh, liquid, and I'm going to just put a tiny bit of oil. Uh, our recipe calls for two tablespoons of water and two tablespoons of oil. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit in it, so I want a, a crumble mixture in my bowl here. Okay, and we just jog the machine when we're making the crumble mixture. Now I know if you can see that from back there, but this crumble mixture now will stick together rather nicely. And it just takes those few jogs, we don't have to do a whole lot of mixing here to get the right consistency. In fact, you, you can even make it a tiny bit drier than this. It, it, it will hold together equally as well. But from this point, you now shape logs. And I wrap mine in saran wrap, and I chill them in the fridge or freezer for about a half an hour. And then we come out and we make pasta using the meat grinder and the pasta attachment. We're now going to assemble the pasta maker onto the meat grinder. When we're using the meat grinder for making anything other than grinding meat, we do not need to use the meat grinder disc or the blade for it. Our pasta attachment comes in several parts. There are ten different discs that you can add, including a lasagna dough, which I don't have pictured here, but uh, you can make ten different types of pasta. For our use today, we're going to use this one to make spaghetti. Uh, to assemble the meat grinder with the pass attachment on, you will need your auger, and we put the auger inside the meat grinder. Now, this is the most important part of it. We have a little auger that goes on the, onto the larger auger, and you must assemble it so that it makes a continuous um, screw all the way up the meat grinder. And I can show you that by putting it wrong way, where I can see there is a, a space in that. But when I put it like that, there's another space there. However, if I put it like that, that makes it continuous. So that's the right way of assembling the past attachment onto the meat grinder. And we use that same principle when we're putting the berry press together as well. So I'm going to push that in, and this is the housing for the past maker that goes over it next. And on the front is where we choose which type of pasta we want to make. And I'm going to do spaghetti, so I will put this down flat. And we will put the little auger on the front of it to hold it in place. And then we use the larger auger of the meat grinder to hold that on in place. And we're all ready to go. Now when we use the meat grinder, your Bosch is going to be uh, backwards to the way it's usually. Um, I'm just going to pull it over. We, we're going to wiggle the meat grinder down onto the base with the leg pointing towards the back. And there's a little lock on it that we uh, activate. And we're going to break the seal and stand it upright so that the pasta will be coming down the front. And we have a collecting tray for it. All right. Now, we've made the pasta we showed you earlier, and we refrigerated it in, in log shapes. That chills it just a bit, so that when we put it through the pasta maker, it's, it's, it's nice and chilled, and it's set just a bit. But before we use that, we're going to oil the pieces. And I oil it very easily by just turning it on, putting a couple of tablespoons of oil through the top, and I'm going to lean it forward, and that oils our pieces. I see a little oil coming out the front end, and we know we've got the oil. Okay. Now we're going to drop in the chilled pasta logs. This is made with the durum flour and the eggs, the water, 
and the, a little bit of oil. Now, if, you're, if you've made your logs too big, and we have just a little bit here, we may have to use the pusher to push them through. But generally speaking, if you make your logs thin enough, they should feed, feed directly in without any, any trouble. There we go, it's caught on. So their oil's coming out first because it's in front. Lock it up a little bit. So here comes our spaghetti. Now the first little bit tends to be a little crumbly, but as we get into it, we're going to get some nice long shapes and we can also put the power up on the machine. short pasta you can let it run out long like this and then just take a nut knife and cut it through like if you're making macaroni but for spaghetti I like to just make it out and lay it out into nice uh, long strips you could have your pot of water boiling right now and drop this right in it only takes about three minutes to boil up when it's fresh pasta uh, if we're doing the macaroni you will notice that the pasta maker has um, holes in the macaroni hole, uh, macaroni die, so you're going to get a hole in your macaroni as you will in this larger um, die for a, a bigger penny or something like that. They all have names, I don't know all of them, but they're Italian and uh, uh, will make all different types and shapes of pasta. So that is our Bosch pasta maker. I have made some fettuccine here just a little earlier. And you can take it and lay it out and dry it like this, or in a dehydrator if you want to keep it, or on a drying rack. Uh, if you don't want to use it right away, it will hang over that. I usually put a tea towel underneath it. One other comment, to clean your pasta dye, because you can see the little holes are filled. We let this dry, and then usually we put this in the freezer. And we take it and give it one good hit on the counter, and all the little frozen um, bits of dough will fall out of it. So it makes it real easy to clean. Now, if you're interested in the pasta maker, you can give us a call on our toll-free number. It's 1-888-735-1044. And we'll be happy to put in a little um, a pack, a page that has some recipes for making different types of pastas, like the spinach pastas and the tomato pastas, if you just ask us. Thanks again.